Join us in today's video where we are featuring our printed digital papers with a set from Louisa Heinzel and playing cards to create a fun Halloween card with a pop-up accordion fold. Welcome to PM Artist Studio. I am Mariah, the M in PM. Please be sure to like, subscribe, and comment below. Now let's get started. Okay, so here you can see I have a bunch of things already cut out um, from the set, from Louisa's set, and from our digital papers. I did go ahead and shrink them down ever so slightly just because I knew I was going to be using them with these playing cards. The just the 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 playing cards have been pre-gessoed. That's what you see there. P had done hers already and that's one of the reasons why I also had everything kind of already trimmed out or cut out. But what I did is put two of the patterns together and that's what you see on the other side there and then put one on either side to the edge. So that way I could just go ahead and create my, my accordion fold like I'm gonna do here. So fold it in half and then in the middle of each one, really easy way to create that little zigzag accordion section that I needed in the middle to create the pop-up. Very simple stuff, really. Now, all it is is going to be trimming out little pieces and parts to figure out where they belong. So one of the cool things that comes with Luisa's set is a set of hair and, or hairs different hat type things but I went ahead I wanted um, a lime green one to go with the witchy skin so I went ahead and drew on some hair for the larger she ends up being on the front so at first I used one of my blendables then Tosca and then again outline with Tosca I think I even have the pencil out there. I think I did a little bit of highlight work. And of course, a wee bit of glitter. It's Halloween. You have to have glitter. Although I need glitter all the time. I know some people have some serious things against the glitter get it but I, I really don't mind if I find sparkles everywhere don't mind it at all so I knew for sure like the little creepy houses or the town that you can create with the creepy houses is so cool um, it drew me into this set for sure right off the bat and then the fun little people kind of note on the the fun little people I went ahead and made them a couple of different sizes again I knew that I wanted to have some variation so whenever we print them out, just kind of size them up and print them at different uh, different ratios. If you want to know, like comment below if you would like to know some various ways to size papers. I can kind of probably walk people through both using software and also just your print settings. I know that's not something that a lot of people do regularly, so if it is something you're interested in, please do comment below. If you're finding value in this video or inspiration for sure, please do like our channel, subscribe, click the bell. We, we, we do these each week. Might even start doing it a little bit more often. And in the future, we are going to be doing some live events, so that will be fun as well. There were some really cool creepy trees that were in the set, in Luisa's set of um, fun Halloween boo it be, I think is what the set is called, <laughs> are included. We didn't actually end up using the tree on this one. Um, P's card does, um, unfortunately she did not record her video, uh, but I think I might show it the, uh, a snapshot at the end of this video showing how the trees can be used. But in this particular card, uh, I did not end up using the tree. I sure will save it for something in the future, I am sure. But um, it just, 
the, the little houses got lost um, up against the tree, just scale-wise and color-wise, just wasn't happening there. These little houses are so cool. So you can see that I trimmed off one of the little tops because I was trying to make sure that it all fit inside of the card. Um, and that was kind of cool too, that you could sort of chop these little houses up and they still work really well. Like you can just kind of glue it back on and do funky things with that, adding just a, another level of, of depth to those very, very cool, creepy houses. I also ended up doing that with some of the characters, so you'll see that coming up. Still trying to figure out if I can use a tree, but like I said, I did not. And I wasn't sure how much I, I was going to pop up, if it was just going to be in that middle section with the little accordion fold, or if I was going to end up using like little tabs or, or, or other pop-up methods. Um, I'm still kind of working through creating more pop-up stuff. I would really like to start making some slidey things too, but just need to work out the, lo the logistics on that. All right, so finally I did make a decision on what paper I was gonna use on the front and the back of the fold there, on the cards to cover them up. but. They needed a little bit more pop and I wanted to bring in some of the yellow from Luis's set into our sets. Um, so you'll see I was kind of figuring out if it was the pumpkins or if it was going to be the plaid papers. We did end up going with the plaid papers as you saw like in the beginning of the intro and then there you see all those other Posca lines made on them just to make them ever so slightly more interesting. And just to break up the pattern a bit more by making it, by adding more lines, it then made it scale-wise go better with the little houses and, and all the other elements that were going on there. Plus we were able to add in that yellow, as I said, to bring in that element from Luisa's papers. The little cluster of bats was pretty cool. Um, I cut them out as one piece. I ended up um, later on, I'll, I'll cut it a little bit more to add yet again another layer. My first set there, I went ahead and it, it was too high, as I said, like with the houses, trying to keep everything inside of the card because I wanted to put it inside one of the envelopes that comes from the Halloween fun pack set. In fact, this whole card could probably create be created using the fun pack set and also Luis's fun boo characters because the little square patterns that come in the fun pack set are five and a quarter which would be perfect size wise scale wise and all of that to go with Luis's characters and then basically most of the sizing down that we did do was about half size so we took the eight and a half by 11 and then just scaled it down by half. And then the little, little ones are like another half, so a quarter. P hates it when I start talking about like the scale and percentage and size. So I know that some of us just don't always think about things in those, those terms, but. Again, if you are interested in maybe me doing a video on, on just some of the various ways that we scale down papers to use them for our smaller journals and cards and things of that nature, I would certainly can do that. I, I'd just love to hear from you guys. Comment below. This was one of the sentiments from our little paper pack set that you see like there's one of the loaded envelopes from it and there's a whole page of the sentiments actually wish it would have been a bit smaller. I probably would have used it inside of the card versus on the outside or probably both inside and out. I just couldn't fit it in. It just, again, scale wise, just too big. I really tried, see, just trying really hard. I wanted to break up that 
that fold and just make it more interesting. So came in with brown Posca, then a little bit of the pencil, a little Prismacolor brown, and made it look sort of like a creepy hill or whatever. And then with the green, I knew I was gonna break it up too. And so here is where you're gonna see bringing in some of those other elements again that you saw at the beginning. I did end up going up, going with the kind of torn up cheesecloth. And I believe we have a video maybe showing. No, I don't think we ever dyed it on video, but we have used this cheesecloth fabric stuff before fibers really. Um, it's all dyed using alcohol inks. So you can get some pretty crazy vibrant colors and start to color match whatever projects that you're using. But it turned out that this bit of green that I had went very well. And again, just adding another element of interest versus keeping everything paper. It's really fun to try to incorporate textiles even into what would just be per, you know, a happy Halloween card. This is almost a little mini journal in a way, just because of the different levels of, of paper and with the fold, it's almost book style. One last little section of the creepy houses. And then get that onto the end part. It was also, I, I went ahead and did the same thing with uh, it as I did some of the others and went ahead and cut that little end off and then glued it up towards the top just so everything fit nicely within the width of the actual card. So you can see there, just fixing one of those sections to, uh, and then getting the other one placed over here in that newer little end piece. Like I said earlier, it really, the little houses were so cool because you could cut them apart and kind of just manipulate them into whatever shape and, and whatever area you're working within. And here I am again, just really trying to get that happy Halloween inside of the card. I never could, never did. I, did, I didn't want to cover up the bats and I didn't want to cover up too much of the houses even though it was vellum and you could kind of see through it, it just still wasn't wasn't quite worth it tricky business trying to get the sentiment in the right place so gave up on that now figuring out the placement of the pumpkin and I love things in threes so it made sense that I was going to put not only the pumpkin there, but also the little, the little zombie mummy guy. And because of the size of the, the witch character, I thought it was best to put the pumpkin and the little zombie guy together and then balance that out on either side really drawing your eye to the middle part and, and the bats do that very well too. I think placement is one of those things that, you know, it's, it's very important if you want to, you know, draw people in and keep them, you, you always want to draw them around and into the center. And I know this is a card, but it works in art as well. <laughs> That's, a general rule. I was so pleased with how both of the plaid papers worked from one section from the front cover to the back cover is kind of how I'm calling it because it's really again going back to that book reference of it being very book like. It's really fun to play with the different patterns along with then the character elements from Luisa's papers. And 
And since I had torn up the other ha Happy Halloween now, again, just trying to figure out where it's going. On the previous card that I had done for Halloween, I did go ahead and use one of these tags and then put the sentiment over it, which worked out really great. I didn't want to do that again, so I wanted to find a, a new way to do it. One of the other things is I wanted to keep the opening of the card. So the positioning, even though the witch was going to work really well, keeping it more in that portrait positioning, landscape was going to be the way to go. So that way when you open the card up, everything is kind of flows nicely. What you see me using here right now is we use this tons. Um, mostly I have used the Tem Holtz Distress Glaze for putting on top of Mod Podge. It's great for that. It is also great to just directly apply to your papers. It seals them. You can see that the color really started to pop back out. Um, this particular type of paper that we print on, or this was printed on, it kind of dulls them a little bit. Um, and that's one of the reasons I really enjoy using Mod Podge or some type of sealer on it because it brings that color back to the surface and makes it pop and really crisp. So the Tem Holtz Distress Glaze is a great way to do that. It also comes, um, Jettikins is I think the original maker of it. And Skycraft is the recipe. So even if you read it on the jar, that's what it says. This is where I split up the bats. I wanted that whole idea of them coming through the little town. And so in order to do that and not make them so one dimensional or you know two dimensional, make them a bit more three dimensional, I went ahead and brought that other little bat to the front. And now I'm just making sure everything fits in that little envelope that we had created. That is from our fun pack of Halloween papers. It was a five and a quarter square and then we fold them into those envelopes and it happened to fit the playing card size perfectly. Not that I'd planned that out, but wish I would have. That was pretty brilliant. <laughs> so this is where I had to make the little witch shorter. And it was really great how Louisa created these characters because it was very easy to do. It was one really kind of enjoyed cutting them apart and then putting her back together. Which for Halloween was perfect. She's kind of a Franken witch. And there you have it. That is our little happy Halloween card inside of our folded envelope. And what I was doing here was actually looking for the little zombie figure because I had forgotten that I actually used the little one for the inside and the big one was too big. So what I ended up doing, you'll see it here in the final, um, I did not record it. I just made like a belly band and used one of the tags. You kind of see me working some of that out right there. And that is then how the envelope closes because I didn't want to seal it up. And this brings us to the end of our card. Thank you for watching. And again, please like, subscribe, and comment below.